you all from Uppercut Woodworks. Um, and wow, I kind of lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Uppercut Wood or, or on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com. If you're watching the video and you want to jump into the chat, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room and sign in with your Twitter account. Uh, we're going to do some telephone design game and some other stuff today. And to talk about that is Chris. Hey, Chris. Hello, Matt. It's Chris Wong here, coming all the way from Port Moody. Uh, you can find me online at flarewoodworks.com and follow me on Twitter at flarewoodworks. Now, tonight we have two guests. Our first guest, uh, my good buddy Paul Marcel St. Ange, coming in from Phoenix, where it's nice and cool. How are you doing today? It's not nice and cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm Paul Marcel. I have a website at halfinchshy.com, and my Twitter handle is also halfinchshy, although I admit I'm not on Twitter as much as I should be sometimes. And I'm wearing this Canadian shirt for, for my uh, Canadian brother up there in Port Moody, a hey. good worker up in Vancouver. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> okay, and our second guest is Jeremy Morgan, and he has a design he'd like to get some feedback on a little bit later on in the show. Jeremy, uh, where can we follow you? Oh, I'm, I've got a blog, uh, a blogspot blog at Life on Wall Street, with, and that's Wall S T. Otherwise, it goes to someone else's page. Um, and then I'm on Twitter at J Dollar Sign, or J underscore Dollar underscore Sign. There's a long involved story from college as to where that came from, so we don't need to get into that. All right. So Matt, should we start off with the telephone game, or anything else you want to talk talk about first? I think we go with the telephone game first because I really liked what I saw. Yes. So uh, if you recall, Bill Griggs did the last uh, design, and he left us with, I guess it was like an Egyptian inspired. Is that what, is that what we described yeah. it as? Yeah. An Egyptian inspired, uh, it, was a, it was a serving table, is what he called it. it. Looked like this one here. A little bit like contrasting wood. And we handed it over to Paul Marcel, and, <laughs> and he took it to a, a different different continent, I believe. I so, even yeah, named different it. Continent. I even gave it yes. a name. Coup de Seth. So if anybody like remembers, hear. unfortunately I didn't, I didn't find my uh, tables book to be able to show it on screen here, but uh, there was a table I always liked from Seth Rollin that had a big, huge rock underneath it holding oh. it up. And I think that's where this design kind of took off for me was that when I when I looked at what uh, was previously there, I, I thought, well, bring up the legs a little bit higher to be underneath the table, and then then that looked like it was then it looked like somebody wearing their pants too high, so I didn't like that, so I wanted to lower them down a little bit. So then for some reason, then the rock uh, ended up appearing there, and then of course Seth Rollins comes to mind. So so that's I think where the the rock came in. Now, of course, uh, well, we'll talk about the build parts a little bit more after. But uh, then, then came. Now, for me, when I looked at that that table, I was thinking it could also be a seat. Could even be yep. a pretty comfortable seat if those sides actually articulated and and would pivot, so that when you'd sit down, it'd kind of lower itself to the right height for for being comfortable. So I ended up keeping it as uh, as a seat. What I originally thought I saw. So you know, scoop seat on the top with a little bit of curves on all four sides as well as uh, being sort of dipped down. So if you've seen any of the kind of like the Japanese temples or Japanese, especially the Japanese uh, castles, that would be a lot of the same roof line that you would see is what I have as the seat top. So as I was drawing this, I'm like, after I put the rock, it's like, well, that's obviously a callback to Seth. And then as I developed the seat, I realized that this is probably very much like the other picture that I sent Chris uh, I really like Japanese temples, uh, temple lanterns, and I sent him a, a picture that I scanned out of a book that's probably a very similar style uh, image. Yes. We'll let him pull that up so you can get a chance to see that. There you go. So like the one on the right there, the Yukimigata lantern is very similar to what I think this, this kind of looks like. Uh, well, actually, so the same the, the other one, the Yukimigata, it's on the on the left as well, just longer legs. So I guess if you're really tall, lanky legs, you could build a table or a chair that's a little bit more like the one on the left. So I think that I, that's where that's where a lot of the sort of the design and the look came from. When I first saw that, I thought that the, the water had receded down to, or 
going up and down. <laughs> yeah, that's true, because you saw it out of context. That's actually out of a, a book on uh, Japanese gardening. Yeah, when you look closely, you see that one has two legs. One has uh, three, maybe four. I can't tell. Yeah, probably four like on three that, legs. that other one. Yeah, it could be three. That's true. Yeah, it's projecting backwards. So, so the table, the way I have it set up on, or the uh, sorry, the chair that I have set up on mine has has four legs, and you know, just the whole idea that if you're going to have a rock there. So I took a look at some some numbers last night, and assuming that we're going to have a chiseled granite rock there, uh, it runs uh, 2,600 kilograms per cubic meter. So the size of that rock there, though, uh, works out to if there was a cube, a cubic space that was holding that rock, it would be 100 pounds. So if you, okay. if you chisel off the corners, you might even get it down to 80. So it's really not that horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's also why I designed it with putting an embedded steel T-channel. So if you were to yeah. uh, bend a flat piece of metal and then also take a, a flat piece of metal and all, you know curve it and then weld the two together so you could basically have a T-channel that's in the same uh, form as those legs. Then you could you know, resaw the legs apart, use a trammel to, to route away okay. some recess, and then uh, epoxy in the T-channel. Okay, so those are wooden legs, but they, they're reinforced. Yes, those are wooden legs, that. but then yep. they'd be reinforced on the inside hidden with uh, the T-channel. The so one of the one of the difficulties with with say if you wanted to build that would be that even though you're epoxying the wood to that doesn't mean that the wood doesn't want to move. <laughs> so you'd want to make sure that that uh, is unable to absorb moisture or change because of moisture. If you uh, thermal, you'd be kind of okay as long as you're not going to crazy as long as you're not going to Phoenix. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you were to do say leaving Phoenix. Do something like that where you epoxied the the T channel inside of the legs, I would process the legs afterwards with like uh, the clear penetrating epoxy which is actually able to waterproof the legs after two applications. I mean you can throw it in the water that's used for boat transoms. So if you did that there'd be no no chance of humidity changing that leg after you processed it. And it actually looks really good. I have a bathroom vanity made with that. Two of them actually. Hmm. So that was my that's my little die trap. <laughs> right. the, the, the long legged um, Yukimigara yeah, reminds me of uh, War of the Worlds. Oh yeah, that one—that yeah. one really yeah. reminded me. That's that's actually where it reminds me of. I I couldn't place it. I'm like looking at that, going, that thing just looks alien. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> so yeah, I like the, actually the uh, the stumpier one, the one that's yeah, on the right. Those ones there I see quite often in the Japanese gardens that I've seen in Japan and mm -hmm. back here in some of the domestic Japanese gardens. So, so I think that the back of my mind was dwelling on that, and that's where the design popped out. I didn't, I would almost be tempted to leave the leave the metal substructure for the legs exposed and maybe just yeah. sandwich sandwich wood on either side. Mm. In, I kind of infill it. Yeah. yeah I could do it like, kind of like, like that, I suppose. Plane. You already got the rocks, you already have a couple you already have some something other than wood going on, so having the having having the metal exposed could look really nice. Mm. Yeah, it could. Certainly, that uh, the way I would imagine the T channel would be that the uh, kind of the stem part of the T would be sticking up on the outside of the legs, and the flat part would be towards the inside of the legs. So there, you could have a sort of a run of metal coming down. Maybe even make it proud so that it looks mm -hmm. like a it looks like a long uh, shark fin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really quick question, um, sure. Jeremy: Is that are those three beer taps over your shoulder? Yes. God, you live uh, a great life. <laughs> <laughs> well, only one of them is all isn't right. that Isn't that typical of woodworkers? It's like somebody can be right smack in the middle of the camera, and all they're doing is looking in the background to get ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at that cool It's door. like I'll produce a video, and people will write me back, hey, at the, the five-minute mark off over your left shoulder, there's this thing that looks orange. What is that? <laughs> yeah. I was, looking at the, I was looking at the cool door. The one that's oh, yeah, that one looks nice, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's sort of a... I mean, honestly, Jeremy, uh, his camera looked a little better when he wasn't, like, in the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to, try to guard my dinner from the cat, so... Oh, there you go. And then there's a bottle of vodka on the counter to your left, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's in case he gets wounded, so he can clean the wound. You just or gotta... at least I care about it. We just got married. Just got married a couple weeks ago, so we've got lots of leftover booze. Oh. Congratulations! 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 Yeah. Um. Not to the cat, I hope. That you just yeah. 
<laughs> no. Okay, good. Some people are really into their cats, and I wasn't sure. <laughs> so, um, getting back to the getting back to the design, how do you how do you see those legs attaching to that uh, stone? Yeah. Careful balance, dude. You get one setup. No. Uh, no, there's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to get uh, diamond tipped um, drilling bits that you'd easily be able to drill that. I mean, certainly I've got a couple of them even here that I've used on some of like the granite pieces that I've done work with, which in my case were granite countertop scraps. But a stone like this would actually cut easier than those tops, so you could easily enough bore that in there, uh, depending on the bits that you have, whether yeah, or not you're we'll going to have to do some. So then you would be able to, with the T-channel, you would have basically a small pipe that just comes straight up and then, yeah. you know, oversize it so that you have more room because you're basically going to be using an epoxy with, uh, like, a filler, a hard filler. Like, say, if you were using um, if you were using West System epoxy, you'd use a 405 filler because it's very structural. And then you would just fill that up and the whole thing would just become <laughs> rock solid, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, same thing for the top. For the top, I would imagine that you would simply put four down rods coming off of the underside of the wood. Yeah. Just so that you wouldn't have to worry about it wanting to pivot or anything like that, because you don't want the wood taking the stress. The rock is going to be fine with it, but the wood wouldn't. Uh, then for those, you could just use a simple drill bit that's a diamond tip drill bit. You can actually get any of those at uh, contractor tile supply stores. Okay. Now, you now specified around, either... that's a whole different thing. <laughs> now, uh, you, spe you specified chiseled granite or a smooth black river stone. And to me, chiseled means uh, faceted. Is that how you interpret it as well? Uh, yeah, if you look at the picture, um, let's see, I don't believe, oh, neither one of the ones that I sent you is a chiseled one. There are some that are fairly okay. chiseled, so they're very okay. fast. It's almost like it's almost like it's okay. a rough one before you would have bothered to polish it, so when they're just yeah. rough okay. shape. And it's a really nice look. There's some of them that are done that way. Um, yeah. Well, the other thing I meant to mention is that while the granite has got a really heavy density, so it makes for a very heavy table, when I was in LA, there's a. It's much more common to be able to just go to a landscaping place and pick up these these uh, lanterns. And I know that there's a couple places that they actually make it, but they make it using a stone product that's a lot lighter. So I mean, it's still not going to be like a 10 pound addition, but instead of being uh, something a lot lighter. Which might even, you know, I, I don't think you would ever want to go without the metal inside those legs. Those legs would just splay right out, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'd be, it look pretty flat <laughs> in, a, in a minute. <laughs> um, tell us about the seat. You've I just got, thought I, I would guess. scoop that out. Uh, and part of the, if you look at the top view, the way it's got that curve on the front, I thought that would make it, that's a lot more comfortable to sit on that when it's got the curve there. Uh, yeah. sort of recessing a ways back and also with the legs the way that they splay out to the corners and at least if you pull your legs back your feet back you're not going to be banging up against uh, any feet that always bugs me when I'm in a chair yeah. Yeah. so I mean granted you can't recline this chair back like you normally would or if you do you got some pretty strong legs <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's about it just scooping the top so that you could use it now of course yeah. this could be a really nice I think this could also make a really nice simple coffee table like a center table mm-hmm mm -hmm. So there, it might even be a nicer design to just simply leave it like that, so don't bother scooping it. It's a bit more... Yeah, that's why the whole thing is is symmetrical, if you look on the top, you know, the whole idea of using uh, okay. scoops on, on the curves on both sides and then the edges. The only difference is if you're using it as a seat, of course, you're not going to have a raised lip in the front, but otherwise, if you left that yeah, there, yeah. You could use it as a table. So is the scoop seat, is it like a, like a, set, like a Maloof-style chair where it's pointed to one direction, or could you sit on it either way? No, that's a good point. You could probably make it go either way. I don't really mean... Uh, yeah, I guess you could do double scallops you could do it. Yeah, you could do the double scallops like that and then have, uh, I can't remember what they call the little fin that goes up in the middle there. There's yeah. a fancy name yeah. for that. I can't remember it off the top of my head now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that would that would be a good way of doing it if you wanted to sit back to back with somebody or or at least make it that if you wanted to sit on the other side, you didn't have to lift this 100-pound chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although it would so, be a great workout. <laughs> The your side your side view almost has kind of a bar stool proportion to it. I almost wonder if you made the legs a little taller and kind of went uh, for a sort of bar stool look. And maybe the thing just... is, is I'm really exceptionally bad at drawing. Like I mean, really bad. Yeah, no, that <laughs> so, that just kind of 
got me so thinking. So when I was drawing that thing, it's like, those legs don't look quite right, but it's kind of late, so I'm just going to leave those. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you're definitely correct that it should have more of a proportion, like in a way, take in, do a do an, um, an aspect ratio type scale on the legs that you see in the front view, but do them to the side view, then it would look yeah. better. At least it would look more, like you say, proportional on the side. Because, yeah, it does look a little bit too tall and narrow, bar stooly. But I, I mean, I think that you could almost just take that view and expand on it to, and maybe even make it a little taller and just kind of go that direction with it. I think it could make, it'd make oh, it make. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, to go more of a bar stool height. Yeah. yeah go up, mm. I guess I would only be concerned that then you're starting to raise the center of gravity significantly. With yeah. The yeah. Lift. yeah. So that becomes, you know, then I guess that's actually kind of a, a DUI impairment that if, you know, <laughs> if you're sitting on a chair like that really high and you can't manage <laughs> the center of gravity, then you're not going to be able to get in that car later. Mm -hmm. so it could be one of those things. It's like the neighborhood I live in. All the houses look the same. If you come home drunk, you're not going to end up in the right house. So it's a, it's an impairment. <laughs> yeah. So you've got a uh, black stone. What color woods do you envision pairing with that? Oh, I was thinking more. I meant to actually look that up. There's a common wood that's used a lot in some of the furniture uh, in Japan for that, that's a, a darker tone, that would look really nice for it. It's kind of, I, I've often heard it's called like Japanese mahogany because it's more that tone, but it's a fine grain wood. It's not the, the, the medium coarse of mahogany. So that's what I picture when I would see that. But I, mean, I, I don't think it would look that great with uh, a lighter wood like a maple or something like that. Not when you got this dark. Yeah, I'm not, not so sure. You almost either. want the, the wood to overpower color-wise the mm -hmm. stone. If, especially if you went with the Black River stone, you know, a nice yeah. smooth stone, then you'd want to go with something that's a little bit darker on the outside to, to kind of draw away. You know, the stone is still there as an accent, but it's not the focal point. Yeah, you want something rich. I, I can envision like a Cocobolo or um, maybe even Black Water Oh, yeah, Cocobolo, definitely. If you've got, you know, a big chunk of it like that, that'd be awesome. Who doesn't? Well, yeah, not everybody has a hoard of wood like you, dude. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I wonder which log I've got in the backyard I want to use today. <laughs> I need to make a jig. <laughs> I have to show you guys the wood that I got today. This piece is just one of a kind. It's phenomenal. Um, okay, let's quit talking about your wood, Chris. Do you want to punch you? <laughs> I'll pull it up here and then... <laughs> and then uh, we'll get to Jeremy's design afterwards. If nobody else has any more questions for... For Marcel. Sure. I, 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 just, I just like it, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. I just like it. If I could uh, figure, next time I go to LA, I'm going to go hit that uh, one place that I went and talked to them about the stones and see if I can grab one. It's actually yeah. called, it's, that is typically the middle stone that goes right underneath uh, the Japanese temple lantern. So if I can get one of those back in the car, maybe I'll try making one. Yeah. A friend of mine does welding, so it's like, hey. <laughs> I have a case of beer. <laughs> and I, I have some metal. I really like it when people use um, different natural materials. Oh, yeah, I think this yeah, would be I love it when, when people incorporate that. So Now, that um, the T, you've got it in a curve. How would you fabricate that? Would that be two pieces well oh, together? Oh, that's what I was mentioning, is that you would take yeah. like a flat okay. strip and you'd curve it, yeah. and then you would take the other okay. one and bend it, and after that you assemble the two yeah. together, then they weld it to create yeah. the T. Yep. And since you're completely embedding it and you're going to be giving it more more room anyway, it's not like you're going to have to grind off any of the welding or polish the welding. In right. fact, if it's kind of rough, it'll help hold it all in there. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that would work. But I'm not a metal guy, so so if it's difficult, I just bring the guy an extra case of beer. <laughs> it's an economy thing. <laughs> if, the, if that structure was done with flat stock, they could possibly drill or drill or cut some holes, a series of holes through it that would allow you to attach the two, uh, two wooden yeah. sides to one another in the center so they'd be secured but still have room to expand on either side. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure how you would... Uh, with a dowel or, or a piece of brass or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could do something like that, yeah. Like I was wow. envisioning that you would do, you would assemble this so you get the, the stock rough and then, uh, you know, joint one edge run it through the bandsaw to, to basically resaw it in half so you can do the, the 
use the uh, trammel and all that to, to route out the grooves where the metal's going to go. And once you got all that figured out where it is, then you would afterwards bandsaw, after it's been glued together, bandsaw, and then maybe even just shape it with some spoke shaves and such. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, you, you shape after the assembly. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you could do something like what you're mentioning there, too, where you pop the holes on both sides, maybe put a brass rod through it, uh, epoxy it all together. And then, yeah, that, that, that piece of wood porn that just came up, that was from Chris's shop. Yes. So what you're looking... Yeah, that's kind of uh, suit fitting, too. Um, so <laughs> what we have here is this light piece of wood is... They're both beech, uh, but the light piece of wood had the bark pressure washed off it, and the bark is still on this other piece here. So this big piece is part of the main, main bowl of the tree, and this smaller piece is a branch that separated and then came back and crossed over. So uh, they've been crossed over and rubbing for maybe 50 years, maybe longer, maybe not that long. But mm. any, it's created a, a lot. Um, it's created. It's worn into the other piece, and you'll see in a minute here what the inside looks like. Wow. You can see the scab, the scab here. That's pretty cool. That'll be fun to see. And. The coolest part is that they lift off so easily. They fit perfectly, and they lift off like this here. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Jim says that his advice his advice is to build something with it. <laughs> um, so I'm looking for suggestions of what to do with it. Um, that's my friend Dave. He's the guy who got it for me. He's my wood guy. So oh, that's an interesting. The way you've got a trough right through it. Yeah. Yeah, um, the application, or the best use, I think, of it is something that allows the two pieces to go together, to fit together, but also to be removed so, so you can see the inside. So something that hinges or slides or lifts, or I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, doesn't do justice to have it together. Yeah. And it doesn't really do justice to have it apart either of the colors in here. Well, at least apart, that piece there, right there, has got a lot of interest right there. Yeah. I'm mean, sure it's inter more interesting to have the other piece there to reveal it, but at least yeah. at least there's yeah. something. That's a, that's a pretty cool-looking piece. This is a 6x4-inch. Uh, Did it grow that square, square there? Scale. Yeah. Oh, that's odd. Squares grow on trees. <sighs> Probably everything does in Canada. <laughs> I see kind of a, a, a hand here, a palm, at least the bottom part, missing the fingers at the top here. Right here, I see kind of a thumb coming down here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a this palm piece, up hand. Yeah, this piece is less interesting. It looks kind of like an oyster, I guess, I guess but... Uh, oh, I'll publicly thank Yami because he tweeted that he liked the bench. Thanks, Dami. He's a suck up. <laughs> well, I know that, but I'll be okay. cool. <laughs> so, so that's that. Um, should we move on now? Yes, please. Yes, I'm please. still monitoring Twitter for questions and stuff. Okay. So I've got two messages from Jeremy here, and. Um, let's start with the pictures here, Jeremy. I think you can fill in the rest of it. So I will do a screen share. I'll put so, it in the primary. So Jeremy is working on a design, and he's looking for a little bit of help. Uh, Jeremy, I'll let you do the talking. Yeah. So we're, I'm, I'm designing a, a TV stand and kind of entertainment center piece. And we spent through a, a few fairly major revisions. It initially started out with uh, some cabinet doors on the side with shelves in the center and then we decided that we didn't want any doors and shelves and just went with drawers and I think last week, last week I think it was, it was um, Daryl Peart had posted some pictures of a piece that he was working on and just the, kind of the, the, the tier drawers kind of caught my eye so I ended up kind of borrowing some some stuff from that 
and ended up with this. And so I've actually got the wood now, and I'm starting to. I've got the the wood cut for the legs. So, but my the quite the main question that I've got right now is I'm, I'm running into the the wood I ended up with. The the four quarter stock is definitely a little bit lighter than I thought. So it's quite a bit lighter than the than the stock that I have for the legs. So I'm wondering it's, what you like. What your guys' thought on like how how much that how much those colors will converge as they age, or whether it would make sense to try to you know just use that color difference. And I also I ended up buying a buying one um, wider board of of cherry that's got a little bit of curl to it that I was considering using for the drawer fronts. But it, it's a it's a bit darker, so it's a lot closer to color in the legs. So I'm I'm now considering possibly using that for the, for the for the rails at least on the front and the side, just to kind of get that color to get the color to match a little better. But I'm not sure how what you know whether trying to get those longer rails out of a out of a out of the curly cherry is going to cause me some problems. I don't think and, I would go with the curly cherry for the rails. I think it would be distracting. And I say yes, that I because agree. I ha there's a cabinet that I see uh, somewhere else where it's got two rails that are curly and all the rest of it's flat. And my yeah. eye always goes right to it. Now, maybe nobody yeah. else sees it, but I think you as a woodworker, your eyes are going to go right to it. Yeah. And, and obviously, curly cherry is going to be gorgeous for the drawer fronts. But don't uh, – I mean, Chris would know the answer to this better. Won't they – sure, they may be a little uneven now for color-wise, but eventually they're all going to be pretty close to the same. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, cherry does tend to even out in okay. color, um, unless it's sapwood, which. I no, I mean, there, yeah, there's a little bit of sapwood, but I mean, I, I, I got, I ended up getting plenty, so I can cut around that. So. Okay. Oh, well, one know, thing you might want to do with the the sapwood is the sapwood on the curly or on the regular stock. Um, there's a little bit of sapwood on the boards that I that I have for the the stretchers and pieces, but I okay. and I have one. I have a I have one wider board that I, I'm planning on using for the top that's wide enough that I can get the entire top out of I can just do two pieces for the top and it has sapwood on it but I was going to leave the sapwood in the center. Mm. Okay. okay, I was going to say suggest I I did a cabinet once where say looking at your design the the rail that's just above the the opening that that's got the two drawers flanking it. Mm -hmm. I, in a way, that rail would have been the one where I put it just it had just a hint of sapwood that went all the way across mm. on the whole thing, and I really like it. Every time I look huh. at it, I still like it. So, I mean, that depends on, on, of course, how, I mean, if your sapwood is just a little bit light versus really, really white, maybe you wouldn't want that. But yeah. if it's just a light contrast or eventually when it gets darker, it'll be just a light contrast. You might like that. Hmm. Yeah, my other option is the... The board that I bought, the board that I have for the legs, I only ended up using, I only ended up using about half of it. So I've got probably another five board feet of that eight quarter, which I, I was intending to keep, you know, keep that for some legs on a, on some additional pieces that are eventually will hopefully go with this. But if, yeah, I could, I could cut that down to use for some. Of, I could probably get m most of the. The rails for the front and sides out of that one piece, but if it's gonna, if it's gonna dark, if it's all gonna darken up and end up pretty close to the same color, I'm probably not, I don't, probably not gonna worry about it too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and th my other, the other kind of aspect of the design that I'm, I'm not entirely set on yet is. Within the within the case, those the two lower drawers just have a you know a web frame below them, and then the that middle row and then the top have more or less a shelf that the that the middle one those two side drawers actually ride on the shelf, and I'm still undecided as to whether to build that shelf with at, out of a, a piece of you know three quarter inch cherry ply with a you know glued to the edge the back edge of that front blade which is kind of how it's how it's modeled right now or whether it would be worth just doing that doing those shelves out of solid wood and just letting the back you know the sides and back edges float in the cuz they're going to be they're going to be set into a dado all the way around in the 
those side and back rails. Mm -hmm. um, is there a particular reason why you have plywood underneath the drawers? The because of that that middle that middle shelf is open in the center because that'll actually be a, actually going to be a shelf in the center. Yep. But you could so, also put a rail underneath the partitions. Yes. And have plywood only in the middle. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think if if I'm going to use the plywood, I would probably just use a, just use one big solid piece. Okay. But that was my kind of the uh, another direction that I've been tossing around in my tossing around in my head a little bit would be to build the the shelves the same way as I would the web frame, but then mm -hmm. then have a floating have a floating panel in them that would basically a floating raised panel that would bring the surface of the panel up flush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't know. I'm not sure how that would. I'm not sure how that would look, and it would. It would definitely be a lot more. It would definitely be a lot more complicated, and a lot more <laughs> parts. So. Yes. Yes. Um, that's something that I've done on more than one occasion. Um, that's probably actually one of my go-to methods. I don't know why it is, but um, I'll find the. I'll find a picture of what I did. Okay. And so I basically use a flat panel and I cut a rabbit around the outside and I yep. set it flush. Um, yeah, the, the joinery at the corners can be tricky and other than that, it's not too bad. I just try and set an even gap around it. Mm -hmm. um. Cause I, I mean, using the plywood for the shelves, that would it would definitely simplify it a little bit, but I'm... I'm a little bit concerned about just having that as a surface that things are, you know, as the shelf surface and having, you know, if it gets dinged or damaged, it's not really going to be all that easy to repair. Um, what's the best picture here? And now a word from our advertisers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is the best picture here. You can see the, the reveal around here. Um, yeah, I used a solid wood panel, so I needed to have that gap. With a plywood panel, you could you could make that gap disappear if you wanted. Yeah, I don't like for the shelves. I don't think the panel. I don't think having that gap would really be a would really cause any problems. It's actually kind of interesting. I, yeah, I like the detail. Oh, yeah, it kind of gives that it gives a nice little kind of a, sh a shadow line around there to kind of isolate that panel. Hmm. Um, I guess the other option would be to just fasten the plywood panel directly to the bottom of the partitions. Uh, join it with whatever you're using, or you know, screws and plugs, or whatever. Yeah. Or you could have a piece of solid stock at borders it. Oh! Hold on, yeah. I gotta go deal with the dog. Okay. Well, I like the reveal. Yeah. I think it's kind of interesting. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. The more I, the more I think about it, I kind of like the, kind of like the idea of the floating panels. I think I might. I mean, I. I mean. I've got a while before I'll have to commit one way or the other, but <laughs> it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, what stage are you at right now? Have you started building, or are you just breaking down stock? Uh, I'm just breaking down the stock. I've got the I got the leg blanks sort of you know cut down and squared up. They're still oversized. I'll probably leave them oversized for a little while and just yeah. Everything. I mean, just leave them oversized. So if I change my mind on what they what they look like, I've got some something to work with. But the and now I'm just starting to work on laying out all the laying out all the parts. I've got my kind of got a cut list put together and starting to work from that to get everything laid out. I, I'm hoping I, I my my intention was to have at least all of the ra all the main rails on the front and the sides try to get those as straight a grain as possible. Yeah. The yeah. the stock that I was able to get for the legs ended up you know I was able to cut the legs from the from the edge and get like a you know 
pretty not pretty decent riffs on on both faces. Nice. So nice. I'd like to kind of keep that consistent through the through all the case, and then just have that have those that have that curly you know the curly drawer fronts, and then have a little bit of that kind of that sapwood streak through the top. So I, when I originally when I originally saw the the curly board, I thought of using it for the top, but it's got a little bit of a it's got a bit, little bit of a twist to it. Okay. So I'm yeah. Not sure. Uh, you, might be, you might be able to pull it flat depending on how much of a twist there is. Yeah, and it's but it's it, it's more of the width of it because it's like it's got a little bit of weight on one edge. So I think when by the time I cut it down, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get the top out of just the at just the two two boards. So I'd have to it get a little tricky. So I think using I've got another board that's mm -hmm. wide enough that I can get the whole top out of just two boards. So I think I, I think I'm going to use okay. that one for the top. Yeah. You could also save the weight and put it on the bottom that corner if you don't want to see it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing this goes in, goes against the wall. It it doesn't. It actually it's going to go in a Ooh. corner and okay. one one side of the corner is a wall and the other side of the corner is actually a a kind of banister and railing above a stairway. So it's not okay. prominent, but it is visible. So okay. I. I noticed that you didn't draw a curve along the back lower rail here. And yeah, I suggest it, that. Yeah, it might it might be it probably be worth worth doing that just to yeah, keep it consistent. For the extra step. Just yeah. so you can pull away from the wall and keep that yeah. uh, continued looking to look at the design. Um, the other comment I was going to make is that uh, you've got a flat spot here and then the curve begins. Yep. I can't tell on the sides. It looks like there's no flat spot there, and yeah. if there or if there is, it's very small. I um, that might not. Is there? Did I did I send you a? There should be a flat spot there. I think did I did I send you a full side view of it? I don't believe so. Oh yes, yes there is. Yeah. Yeah, because the there it is. Okay. the way yeah. it's so I initially I initially had the front just as one one big continuous curve, but because it's I think yeah. that that width is just under. Yeah. Just under 40, the curve was so subtle it almost wasn't noticeable. Yeah. So the the way it's drawn right now is the the end piece has like a little one inch flat and then a then basically just an arc that goes up a half inch. And I took that arc and split it uh, on the front, yeah. so it's that yeah. same arc connected with a with a flat part in the center. Yeah. I think I elongate the arc on the front a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe make it 50 percent longer. Okay. Um, that, that flat stands out a little bit too much to me. It looks a little bit too flat. Yeah. In my opinion. How are you going to do I like, I look, management on I this? I like the look of the side, though. I'm sorry? I like the look of the side, the rails yeah. on the side at the bottom. Yeah. What was that, Matt? How are you going to do cable management on this? As somebody who just went through this... Um, I know it's an entertainment center. You're going to have a DVD player and a cable box and a receiver and a TV and speakers, and the cables can really become a mess. I don't know if you thought about making the drawers short so that the cables from the receiver can go down and the power can be in there. And hmm. I don't know. I don't. You know, is it going to be a hole in the top, or, the is, it, or is everything going to hang out the back? I mean, hanging out the back is fine if it's against the wall. Right. Yeah, right. Right now, my intention is just to have everything go out the back. I mean, that's the the piece that this is replacing is just a you know a, a cheap sort of particle board piece with with sort of a metal frame that's a, a similar layout where it's got it just has two drawers on the bottom and then a flat a single flat shelf that's open all the way around. And so right now, all the cables are going out. So I just got the cables sort of bundled together and wrapped. But I hadn't I hadn't thought about making the drawer short and kind of using that space behind there. That that yeah. So one one thing I I've I've done before is leave the drawers short, put a power strip back there. Mm -hmm. All of the all of the power cables drop right into there and plug in, so you have the power strips hidden. Um, you want to make sure that you know you're obviously not doing anything crazy with things getting too hot or getting pinched. Yeah. You can also do that for the HDMI cables that go down, speaker cables where you can get a you can get a pretty nice finished look. Um, I've also seen people do a false back, so there's actually um, a big 
narrow but very wide pocket in the in the back for everything to exist. Um, it can give it a really clean look. Yeah. Is it thinking about that? Like if the that that sort of that middle shelf is is sized pretty pretty close to the the receiver that's going to be going in there. So if the, even if I just had even if I just had a, an, a, an access through that that top shelf down behind there, and then continued down behind those lower drawers. Yeah. That might almost allow me just to hide all the cables behind it. Yeah. Uh, I've also seen it on the false backs where you you set up all your stuff, all your cables are just going down the back, and then you have one panel that goes on the back with like rare earth magnets. Oh yeah. It covers that all up and it gives it a really super finished look from the back. Huh. They do that a lot for um, studio apartment furniture where your entertainment center's out in the middle of your room and you you want to have a, a cleaner look. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the right like I said r right now where it is it's sort of it's sort of in a corner and the back is somewhat visible. Yeah. But yeah, that's I'll have to think about that. That's that's kind of interesting. I hadn't I hadn't really thought about having a dedicated passage for the cables. I mean, we don't like. Granted, we have there's only I think there's only five or six cables that go back and forth. A couple of HDMI cables and a couple of optical cables, and that's it. But so, so the uh, receiver is going to go on that smaller shelf. The, the, re the receiver will go in the center, and then the, the top shelf is, is, is not as tall. We'll just have the DVD player. We just have, like, a DVD player and an Apple TV, and then there's actually we have some small speakers that will sit in there as well. And so uh, uh, is it really close, or are you gonna, uh, did you take a look at what the clearance requirements are for your receiver? I mean, I know my Onkyo has got, like, two and a half inches above it. It needs mm. to be wide open, and okay. that thing will cook very easily. But that no, I, I, yeah. was a pretty hot receiver. Huh. So, I, yeah, so you take a, take a look. You'll usually find on uh, at least I've always had Onkyo receivers, and they always have on their minimum requirements for clearance. So okay. give that a look if you if you can. One thing that you might want to do is if you want to keep that same design and keep that receiver in that same place is on that shelf that's above it. You're probably going to be putting that DVD kind of close by. You might be able to, uh, in a way, drill out or, I mean, uh, plunge out a rectangle that yeah. you're going to be covering up with, like, in a way, like a metal mesh or something like that. I mean, you can mm -hmm. get some of those that are really nice, right? They're they're black, so you can put that there, so at least the heat can rise and get out of there. Yeah, It'd be an option for you. Or even if I guess if I was to, in possibly, wonder if that like wonder if I could make that instead of that top shelf being solid, just do do it with slats or something. Yeah, something like that. I mean, if you, or if you really wanted it to be solid because people are going to be able to see the sides, either side of, say, where that DVD player is going to go, then, yeah, you could maybe do a hollow thing. Maybe you could make it look like a, a weave. So make a cutout in there, and then you could weave slats. So you could do it like, what do they call it, a lattice top weave. Uh, weave. That could actually look really cool. Yeah. And that could be done with wood strips. So. Or I was thinking, like, I was almost kind of thinking even just... Um, Front to just front to back slats with spaces between them, which would also, which that would also give me give me space to kind of feed. I could just feed cables right through those slats. Yep. Just that would just open up open up that whole inside. Let you know much better. It'd be better do that below the receiver and up to that top shelf. Kind of that gets rid of my eliminates my issue of having to have plywood in there because that mm -hmm. plywood will definitely pull the heat in. And don't don't forget that you're gonna have probably four power cords. Yeah. TV, receiver, DVD, Apple TV. Yep. Right, and then you're gonna have three 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 or, or more HDMI cables, speaker mm -hmm. cables. So um, it's a lot less cables than than in the pre HDMI world, but it's still a lot. Yeah. So. Well, that's yeah. I'm gonna. I think I might explore that the the idea of using just not instead of having solid shelves, just having them sort of just be slats is kind of appealing. It, mm -hmm. Well, your receiver will appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, 
I always hear yeah. whenever people talk about entertainment centers, there's always some bozo that you know, comes in with the heat thing. <laughs> now yeah. I'm feeling like that bozo. But there, yeah, if it was on that shelf, it would. I, I know my receiver wouldn't last. Uh, it would yeah. shut down. It, it has its own power off if it gets too warm, but yeah. it would definitely do that in that spot. So like like I'm designing an entertainment center now, the diamond shaped one, and you know those shelves are all open. So I designed it specifically for that, and then with a column to hide the wires. Mm -hmm. And like right now, where I currently have my receiver, it's an entertainment center that I purchased from a store, and it's all intended to put things inside. But they obviously didn't expect you to use something that could get warm. So mm -hmm. I. Uh, uh, so that one, I actually have the receiver on the top because if I put it on the inside, it is really hot on the inside. So yeah. it can't be good for it. Yeah. The, I, 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 that's that, I uh, that's that project, project that's been sitting there for way too long. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. A couple uh, complicated cuts in there. One or, one or two. <laughs> then you go to clamp it up and you go, oh, man. And then one other, one other thing, Jeremy, one of the things that we found useful was um, making it easy to run an aux in, like for your MP3 player to the front. Yeah. So you can hook up hook up your MP3 player. Um, what was the other one? Oh, I noticed that your, your area for your speaker didn't seem very high. I don't know if you're putting a center channel in there or... If if you've already measured how high that speaker is going to be, but our current entertainment center doesn't 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 have enough room for our center channel, and so I have to build a separate a separate TV riser basically for it. Yeah. No, actually, I hadn't. Yeah, had, we we're currently not using the center channel. Um, I guess we I should probably look at that and see if I can, might be might be able to figure out how to put that in there. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm doing with with mine. Um, not currently because I don't have mine all set up that way, but when, when it goes in is uh, I have an option that I can send the center channel to the TV. So I actually really like that because that's where you want it, is right where the dialogue is coming from. Since they yeah, the problem is a lot of these TVs have crappy speakers. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, these flat panels. So. Yeah. yeah, we actually, we, we, I mean, we just, got a, just got a new TV, which was good timing because I was able to kind of up... up Upsize the top of this a little bit to make sure that the TV wouldn't be overhanging the edge. Yeah. But the we really we don't spend we don't spend an awful lot of time actually like sitting in front of the TV and watching it. Like really most of the most of the time the music's just playing throughout the house because we've got some other speakers wired in the house. So more often than not the stereo is just driving speakers that are out on the deck or here in the living room or here in the dining room. So it's kind of a not it's not a really not a very conventional speaker arrangement. Mm -hmm. Now, but thinking just thinking along the lines of running cables through it, the if, if I could, if I have a way of running all the cables basically through the shelves, that still leaves me the, still leaves me with running the cables around the t the back edge of the top. Yeah. I I wonder wonder what it would look like if I if I did basically a split top, where the top, the two, the two boards for the top had a gap between them in the center, which would, I mean, the the TV pretty much covers up the entire top, so there's not not wouldn't be too worried about losing any functionality, and but it might, especially if I had that, if I had the sapwood edge toward the center, sort of lining that gap, oh, cool. it'd be kind of interesting. Now, do any of your boards have a full uh, full wane on the edge? Or just partial? I think there's just there's just a there's just a little bit of partial on a couple of them. Can you get those two to beat up in kind of a Y and give you a, like a grommet a port mm. at one point at the end or in the middle or something? Mm. That'd be awesome. Well, that I think would that'd be, be awesome. I don't know that. I don't think I don't think any of the boards I currently have would really work for that, but that might almost be worth looking for some. I like that idea though. That would be really cool. Just um, you could you could car you could carve totally it as well, Chris. But yeah, <laughs> you you could carve it yourself too. Just make it synthetic. Yeah. That's well, cool because it would be one of those things that that you don't see unless you're looking for it. One of those kind of hidden. Yeah. yeah. Hidden yeah, details. Yeah, the TV's that wider I, than the. Uh, yeah. By the way, hi Scott. Hey guys. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. It's all right. I got got working. I'm shaping some planes. And... 
Oh, look at look at Chris bring out the whiteboard. Okay, we're gonna run the defense back here, and we're gonna send up. <laughs> and, uh, I could use a chat like that. We're gonna be playing in an hour, so come on. Hey, are any uh, guys 49ers fans? <laughs> I saw your I is, saw your post, Matt. Is no, that played on ice or not on ice? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, in the Midwest, they play some football on ice once a while. You know what that kind of looks like there, enough. Chris? That looks like a plumber bent over picking up something. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it'd be... I feel, I'd almost feel like it'd need, it would want to be right in the center so that that, that gap yeah. would almost end up being covered by the TV. Yeah, center would be cool too. Again, Chris. Well, what? Did you erase that? I just erased it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't put you on primary, so it wasn't it wasn't showing it very large. Okay, so so I was suggesting uh, have that live edge at one end, so you get a either live live or split. That you have your your breadboards like that there, and um, you could also, if you get the right shape, you could have it in the middle there too. That. And with a slight modification, look at this, we get a couple circles here. Hmm. See that? So you start here. Yeah, you start and there and move this way here. The net. And he's going to go this way here, yeah. <laughs> and there, you draw them in towards the boards here. Fortunately, I'm playing cut it into the middle. <laughs> so, yeah. and, that, and that way, if the defensive end. Bites on the run, you can go outside. There you go. You need a pulling guard in there, though, somewhere. Okay, he's obviously the quarter that's not Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, hey, I lived in Michigan. That's almost Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> Formerly. I think the only thing with those live edge pieces, Chris, is putting them in the center. You don't want them under the TV. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't put them in so the middle myself. Them. Yeah. Um, it's personal, though. But yeah. Chris, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to email you a quick picture. Okay. Of the, I just added the split to the top just because curious to see. It's all... It, Kind of, that's kind of interesting because with the with the breadboard ends having the top being split wouldn't really, you know, would be I think would be relatively easy to do. So I don't know what. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What do you guys? I mean, I'm trying, to see, I'm trying to think if there'd be any real. I don't. I don't really see any. There. I don't see any structural problems with doing that. Nope. Like, nope. Um, they're solid wood, so they're fine. Um. And if they're joined most of the way, then you absolutely have no problems. Um, and if you have a live edge, great. If you don't, just undercut it. Um, if, if, you, if you just carve it so it's beveled inwards, um, then it just disappears and looks, pretty, it looks really good, I've found. Hmm. You know what I mean by undercut, right? Like undercut on the under, under on the bottom of the bottom edge, so it looks thinner. Yeah, so, so it's be, it's beveled. Yeah, towards the top. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So um, <laughs> you can bring it back as far as you want, like something like that, maybe, or, yeah. or just a little bit like that, just so it looks like it comes to a point. Um, I wouldn't have it angled this way here. I don't. I don't think that looks very no. natural. Yeah. You want to have it the point at the top there. This, of course, being an end view. What a great whiteboard. <laughs> nice. Now I like the even like even if I were to do the um, even if I were to have just a have a the gap be the full width of the top. I think it might be nice to have that have it be have the. the the width of that gap be pretty narrow, and then just have a little bit larger, have a little bit larger cut out in the center, just to get the yeah. cores through, yeah. and let the let the cables run out. 
Yeah, um, definitely. Kind of ha having a, like a, know, a, a tapered, or if you will, or elongated, like a elliptical. I don't know. Tape, taper, I guess. Yeah. Hold on here. It's and remember your cable channel needs needs to be big enough for the ends of the cable. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've That's an easy one to mistake. I used to design yeah. automation equipment, and you'd be surprised at how often you end up cutting plugs off and splicing wires back together because that somebody didn't think of that. Yeah, um, Jeremy, if you end up carving that yourself, try and find a grain pattern that also that you can follow. To get that shape. Uh, okay. Or just uh, cut it randomly. No, that that's a really good idea. Just. You can go read uh, Chris's blog about his flow table. He's got good yeah. details about doing that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, even I think I, I think I, I I like the idea of even just just kind of just cutting it cutting it to follow the grain pattern and not even not really yeah. trying to make a fake live edge, but just kind of cut it to follow the grain pattern and leave it kind of that just to kind of give it that natural shape. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I would do it for sure. Hmm. And I've seen some really interesting cabinets as well. Um, one that comes to mind, it was uh, Douglas Spur had uh, two live edges facing inwards, and it yeah. had about a quarter inch, quarter inch, half inch gap in the middle, and it was lit from the inside. Mm. So it just looked amazing. You had the light coming through between the two live edges. I thought that was really, really neat. And then a local guy over here did the same thing with two slabs of uh, curly maple. So it was a really gnarly curly maple edge, and it looked phenomenal too. <laughs> so it's a, it seems to be a common a common theme redone, but yeah, it was very very nice. Yes, yeah. right, um, that I think that that dire that direction for the top would kind of kind of follow with the idea of using kind of using this using the individual slats for the shelves too. Now, if I were if I were to do basically do slats for the shelves, like how would you guys? What would you? I mean. I'm thinking if I did, you know, basically did sort of a web frame with a groove all the way around the inside, then I could make the make those slats thicker and just wrap at the ends of them to fit in and just put spacers between them and the grooves or versus I mean instead of having to cut, you know, dozens and dozens of individual mortises. Um yeah. I would use spacers. Yeah, um spacers sound Pretty good, but uh, they can be a pain as well because it means you have twice as many parts to glue up, or three times as many parts to glue up when yeah. it comes that time. Let, let me um, tell you what Chris's answer is: get a domino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't. Know. That's probably Paul Marcel's answer, but um, I want to make another comment. No, I remember the castle project. <laughs> the what? <laughs> um, I, re I remember the castle project. I won't suggest it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard you. Uh, um, on the side panels here, you've got a a linear design here where it goes side to side. I was going to suggest um, looking at the top. It's a largest expanse here. Yeah. If you took out this rail here, you could put your panel in this way here. It becomes more of a, a vertical. A vertical, you get a vertical panel taller than it is wide. It'll see, make it seem less uh, bulky, less um, <laughs> more taller, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And if you do that, you could also throw in that live edge, <coughs> full live edge design element in there as well, with two panels, two pieces. Hmm. Yeah. What? What? What do you? What would you think about if I? I if that, if that's, if I did, if I turned the grain orientation of those side panels, but kept, still kept them as two side panels, but did it as, you know, just did one book match panel and then split it between those two. Do you think that would that look kind of weird? Um, I've never, I've never quite warmed up to the idea of two book match panels with a style down the middle. Yeah. Well, um, no, the, the style would be the style with the book match would be left to right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but you still have that a piece down the middle, right? Is that what you're no, suggesting? No, the, the oh, okay. It would be it would the grain the grain would be chain the grain would be rotated ninety degrees, so the grain would follow yeah. along, would match the top, and I could okay. Pro would probably so, have enough of that board to even use the same you know use the yeah. same piece to keep that keep that yeah. same look with that the, the sapwood in the center. Yeah, I would do. I would. I would go. For, I would try that. Hmm. So the grain on the side panels runs up and down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that idea. But do you do you think that would? I'm trying to think if that would look weird with still having that middle rail. I guess I mean I guess I could eliminate that middle rail. Yeah, the, the middle rail disappears. It gets tucked. It gets tucked inside. <clears throat> Tuck, just kind of just put a kind of put a spacer on. You know, put that on the inside. Now I my, but my I thought I actually I thought about I I had thought about doing that but my one concern is it's, you can't really see it but if you look at it from a kind of a back isometric view where you can see the back of the cabinet and the side I oh because that yeah. back the back really needs that that center rail because of, because of that okay. shelf yeah so that was that was kind of what led me to okay. you know, keeping that extra rail on the side sure. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, but I do like I do like the idea of turning the grain orientation on those side panels and just kind of mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. continue, you know, letting the, almost having the top flow down over the sides. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to th throw that out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Chris, I have an idea. Oh, thanks, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Scott. That's great. That's 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 fantastic. I caught that uh, at a at a previous uh, go chat. I just I found that the other day. I had to share. No, it. really, thanks. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I have an idea, Chris. Uh -huh. We have to wrap up, but I think that this is a very interesting design problem. <clears throat> So I think what we should do is we've given Jeremy a lot of input. Let's have him go noodle on it for a week or two or whatever and have him come back. Yes. With a new, new hoot nanny, a new design. What do you think? He gets to play the telephone game by himself? Yeah. Or, <laughs> you, could, or I, you, know, you could come up with a design too. Yeah, mine would be quite different. Um, but... Okay, well, we've got Jeremy. He gets to play the telephone game design starting October 2nd, and he'll be on the show October 9th. Um, so how about, is that too far away? Three weeks away? No. I mean, he should come back whenever he wants. Whenever you whenever yeah, yeah. want, you're yeah, welcome. Because sure. I think that, I mean, the, all, I think all, the, all these details that I'm sort of playing around with are all things that, Will be further down the rock. Further, they're not. They're not going to affect that base carcass structure. So, mm -hmm. I, I uh, the wife's out of town for the next two weeks. So I'm hoping to get quite a bit done, but I don't think yeah. I'm going to get get much past uh, getting the getting all the carcass bits done in the next two weeks. So that's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to get you back to talk about <clears throat> the changes that you decided on. And uh, Paul Marcel, we want to get you back on as well to talk about <laughs> your entertainment center, which we didn't talk about, but much anyhow. Sure. Um, I have to see how my maybe Wednesday, sometimes my Wednesdays are, are busy, but I can talk to you on the side about that. Sure. Yeah. Um, we will get. Uh, you can get some pictures together for us to look at. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was also thinking. I need to take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. horrible at photos. I'm worse at photos than I am at drawing. So. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to show a one-hour video in a one-hour show. Okay. Good yeah. point. Touche. Yeah, let's not do that. And you just um, start wrapping it up? Yeah, okay. So, uh, Mike, Mike Mater, you have the design next. And um, I know you know that. So we will, we'd like to get you on the show next week to discuss your design. And after that's my mother, Fei Wong. And after that's Jeremy. So we've got Adam and Pete after that. And hey, if you want to join, we'd love to have you play the telephone game. Drop me a line. You can 
catch me on Twitter at Flair Woodworks or send me an email, chris at flairwoodworks.com. we got to get some more names here. We're getting to the bottom, and when we get to the bottom, I get to play. So sign up. Cool. All so right. That's what I've got. Well, thank you. <coughs> that was fun. All right. Cool, everybody. So that was WoodChat for September 18th, 2013. Uh, pretty full hangout today. We had um, Scott showed up a little bit late because he was doing real work. Sorry, guys. Uh, Ooh. And we had two two guests on the hangout, and it uh, looks like we've got some follow-ups to do with some of the designs and um, see see more designs in the future. And then uh, next week we'll continue the telephone design game. So we do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, but even when the Hangout's over, WoodChat continues 24-7, 365 over on Twitter. Just send a tweet with hashtag WoodChat, and one of the friendly WoodChatters will be sure to be a helpful and friendly woodworker and help you out. So that's it. Everybody say good. Unfriendly WoodChatters can help, too. Just What's that? Unfriendly WoodChatters can unfriendly help, too. Unfriendly WoodChatters can help, too. Yeah. I think people um, post funny pictures of their partners. Yeah. <laughs> 40, 49ers fans... They're welcome too, as long as it doesn't get too noisy for them. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is it. Thanks for you guys for coming. All right, thank you. See you, everybody. Thank Good you, everyone. guys. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Bye.